As you all know, my name is Tommy Dreamer. Uh, I was trained in Brooklyn, New York, uh, Gleason's Gym by Johnny Rods. Uh, we all basically have the same dream. Some of us will make it, some of you will not. The WWE thing of you gotta shake everybody's hand and all that stuff. I, you know, I have seen people where this guy's on the phone and they walk up to him, hi, I'm Joe Smith, while I'm interrupting your phone conversation, then right away that person has heat. I will assess you and I will be brutally honest with you. And the first day everybody hated Melina. And this is the first day, and like me and her joked about it later, but mm -mm. simple little stuff like that. Like the young bucks getting heat for shaking hands and all that stuff. And I'm friends with those guys, and I'm friends with Booker, and I'm friends with Rob Van Dam. And then it all gets blown out of proportion. It's all a bunch of horse shit. Every time you get in that ring, if you can't do something better or you can't learn, you just need to leave because there's no one that good. AJ Styles, who I think is phenomenal, he messes up. Randy Orton, he messes up. We all mess up. I was like a casting director for WWE. At one point, I couldn't bring in guys or well, guys. I couldn't bring in people if they were not six foot two, 220 pounds, in good shape. There's not a lot of people like that out there. I love this kid. I'm a huge mark for Sammy. I said I want to wrestle him. We were talking about it. Blah blah blah. Then he told me like you know he used to watch all that shit. But I think he's super talented. Would it be hard for me to get him hired because of his height? Yes. Not because of his body. But in that ring, if he had the opportunity to shine like I saw him shine in Los Angeles, the people would accept him in a heartbeat. He's fucking really good. I, and I would always tell people when I ran the developmental system, I will hold your hand till you make it to there, but then I gotta let you go, and it's feast or famine, and you're swimming with the sharks, and you're surrounded in chum, and you may be eaten, or you may ascend. Some guys did. Some guys did. I know him, I know him. I'm not gonna treat him any different than I treat you because we're all human beings. Uh, I've quit WWE. Um, I do not fear Vince McMahon. I don't fear anyone. We all bleed red, we will all die. So you're this company's Steve Austin, or you're this company's The Rock, and, and in our company, at first, nobody knew who Tommy Dreamer was. Nobody knew who the Drunken Sandman was, or Taz, or Rob Van Dam. But we built up our name. We built up our own company, and then everybody got over. You got anything for me? This is your one and only opportunity. Yes, sir. Is there currently like an official age cutoff as far as most companies go that they're looking for? ECW had an 18-foot ring. WWE had a 20. That extra step would throw you off. It's fucking hard. Doing TV, doing all this shit. And I used to run the shows, it was difficult. So now you're 35, we gotta take a year to mold you. Now if the fans are gonna get behind you, that's another year. Now you're 37. Vince McMahon hates the spot where Rob Van Dam throw the chair, the guy catches it, and Van, Van Daminator. Vince hated that spot. And Vince was like, God damn it, why did you just put the chair down? He's right. <laughs> <laughs> you throw the chair at me. Oh shit. Hot potato. I remember one time, the hot potato spot, he fucking blew a gasket. He was right. But again, Paul Heyman booking, good. Vince McMahon booking, because it's different mindsets. You know? I have been the guy, hey, you gotta get this guy over. I'm better than him. The people like him. No, but we want to push him. Okay. That was my job once I went to WWE. We're gonna bring these guys up, you're gonna make them look better. But I want that. No, we're not gonna give it to you. Why? We wanna invest money in him. Guess what, guys, it's fake. One time I was asked to find a black midget. You know how hard there is to find a black midget? <laughs> <laughs> that wrestles? <laughs> I'm serious. I found that little viscera guy, but uh, I remember Mickey James. Mickey James is probably one of the most talented females ever and she's crying to me on the phone how come they're not calling me up calling me up calling me up and i was like mickey you need to look at the girls what they have and what you don't and i couldn't tell her that she needed boobies but she got boobies and they called her up uh from when you first started in ecw to like where you ended up 
what were some things you feel that you did like personally, like either mannerisms wise or whatever, to like get over with the ECW audience as a babyface? Correct. Um, I had a really hard time, especially here in Philly, um, to get getting over with the people. Again, steal from people you like. You know, you you look at you know Randy Savage, the mark that he left, but like. Think of some of the shit that he did, the, oh yeah, that's fucking retarded, but we all remember it. I used to get color every Friday and Saturday, and I was like, fuck, why am I doing this? Because the fans expected it, but you could retrain them. Me, Taz, and Paulie are sitting probably around here. Sandman was a surfer. Sandman carried a surfboard to the ring. He would come in the back, he would be drinking beer, and he'd be like, yeah, wow, wow. And we were just like, dude, that's his gimmick. But, and a lot of guys also, you're training for six months, you're training for eight months, six month girl goes back and asks eight month guy, how was my match? He knows dick. She knows even less dick. <laughs> <laughs> and you screamed, pause and look at the people. Look at the fucking people, mate. And he goes, I just did this. And he goes, I got more heat out of doing this than fucking I had in the whole match. And you screamed at me, and then I jumped off, and you moved, and it started my comeback. Um, I guess my question would just be, what's any advice you have for a girl trying to make it? <clears throat> the divas. <laughs> uh, you have to. It's a male-dominated sport. I would make sure you are the best at what you do again in the ring. Your pitchers, it's also a cosmetic business. Calling it out in the ring is a lost art. Some of the younger guys might be intimidated to come and ask veterans for that. Should you tell them not to be like intimidated at all? They really should like always try to like. Back to answer his question, it's uh, you got to read people. Um, if you see a guy and he's walking in like he's got 15 somas in, maybe you may not want to have it. <laughs> Why do you think that our industry has just collapsed and what do you think you would do to fix it? The eliminators out there and we had a bunch of crazy men in the back. If it went down and Varlins decided to really go after Taz, we were going to beat the fuck out of him in the ring. Because this is the only business where we could hate each other for real, but go in there and tear down the house, which is awesome. I hired Brodus Clay, well, Brodius Clay. I hired, he was a bouncer in fucking Los Angeles that got us into a nightclub and he was a big ECW fan. And I was like, dude, you're fucking huge. Ever think of wrestling? I love wrestling. I'm gonna hire you. You got me, you got me drunk tonight. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, this was where a lot of men and women started their career. I met Beulah here. I had said it once before that once ECW went out of business, I would never come back here unless it was on my own terms. <clears throat> and I'm not gonna cry. Other historic notes, I remember when uh, the public enemy was hung from here by a rope and our hard camera shot was here. And those were the bleachers. They used to have bleachers. Where that curtain was, there was bingo. And when the matches were bad, the fans would chant, we want bingo. This was a developmental system for the business. And all the wrestling stars, if you made it in ECW, you made it in the business.